Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. Welcome to our webinar, How to Write a Cold Email That Your Prospects Will Respond to Every Time. Our goal at the end of this webinar is to have you writing excellent cold emails that will elicit a response as soon as they are read. And even if your prospects don't email you back right away, we're going to show you how you can use our vision solution to know when they are interacting with your emails and forwarding them around to their colleagues. So by way of introduction, I'm Chris Takuna, the Vice President of Emerging Product Sales at InsideSales.com. I'm also the former CEO of iHands, which was recently acquired by Inside Sales last year. The uh, acquisition has been a phenomenal success. Our vision email tracking and logging business has grown by over 300% in the past year. And if you talk to our customers, they will tell you that vision is the one product that sales reps would pay for out of their own pockets if the company stopped paying for it. So I'll come back and tell you more about vision and how it's going to benefit your cold emailing after Heather Morgan teaches you how to write a cold email. So without further ado, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Heather. I moved back to Silicon Valley about three years ago after spending years abroad as an economist. At the time, I had been doing economic development research in North Africa and Cairo right after Arab Spring, so I was living in post-revolutionary Cairo. And right when I moved back, I got a job in Mountain View with a small startup that needed me as business development manager to get into about 50 different high-level relationships with investors and C-level executives in the gaming industry. But I knew no one, and I knew very little about games at the time. So I just did what I've always done whenever I've been to new places where I had no network, and I made a list of people that I thought would be influential that had common criteria in terms of needs and pain points and different ways that I could benefit them. And I just created a few CSVs of about 150 names that I then began crafting cold email campaigns to. So I basically wrote two or three different uh, sequences of emails for this audience. And within about a month of starting, I had gotten a 67% response rate from some of the most skeptical people in the industry that are regularly bombarded with uh, generic cold emails. So I was successful because my approach was very different and very personalized. I had targeting based on what they had invested in the past, um, as well as some of their backgrounds and personal interests and no one even knew it was a mail merge or a cold email. They just thought of it as a personal request. And the really good cold emails are like that. So not long after that happened, my boss started bragging about what I was working on. And next thing I know, um, a bunch of other companies are asking to take me to lunch and dinner, buy me coffee because they're trying to poach me. And that is how I got my first six or seven clients uh, for cold email campaigns. Time went on and the company was relocating and I decided it was the perfect time to start my own company and I started sales folk. About two years later now, uh, we've worked with over a hundred companies, completely bootstrapped, uh, just dog fooding our own cold email best practices. And I've, in the last 10 years, written more than 10,000 cold emails by writing at least one cold email every day. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to actually write a cold email from start to finish that will get a response rate that is two to three times higher than the industry standard as we regularly do for our clients. And I'm also going to share a few secrets um, in terms of how to write a mass email that feels like it's one-on-one. -on -one. 
So the first trick to cold email is really understanding who you are writing for. A CTO is totally different than a VP of marketing or a VP sales or a sales rep. So you need to think about what industry are they coming from? What size company are they in? What are their needs? What are their pain points? And a great way to start, whether you're emailing a single individual or 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 100,000 people is to actually look at a few names from your list. So pick three, five, maybe 10 names from your list and go on LinkedIn and actually look at these people. Take note of the bullets and uh, their skills, how they recommend people, how they're recommended by others, how they describe their job description, and anything along these lines that might be relevant. Go a step further. Go on Twitter, look at forums, see what kind of content they're consuming, writing, sharing, and you start to get a sense of who these people really are. And so once you have that, you can think about how you want to write your cold emails. So the first step in writing a cold email is thinking about the subject line. What can you do to entice these people to actually open your email versus just delete it or ignore it or worse, have it marked as spam? So way too many emails these days are extremely generic and they're using the same templates and subject lines from 5, 10, 15 years ago. Um, things like introduction, company name slash first name, uh, and so forth. And the problem is this approach has been done to death. People want a magic bullet, but in reality, uh, once you have that and it's just used so many times, people become immune to that trick and actually very weary of it. And so what I instead advocate is thinking of value that you can actually add to your subject line to entice your prospects to open and keep reading and actually form a relationship. So a really simple trick is to say that you have an idea for something or advice for something else or a tip, feedback, anything along these lines that just by opening the email, they're likely to get value out of it. And so here is an email that got, I believe, 12 people responded to it um, and actually set up appointments. The open rate was probably around 53%. And it's idea for company sales objectives. So that is so much more specific and relevant and thoughtful um, that it makes the prospect think that you've actually taken the time to write to them as a one-off request instead of just spamming them. So once you've got them to open it, what's next? Okay, so the first sentence of your email determines whether they're going to keep reading or just stop right there. And the problem is a lot of people's emails are very, very self-focused. It's kind of natural in terms of how we were taught to write letters as children. Um, you're used to saying who you are and why you're contacting them. Unfortunately, uh, in most cases, this is actually a waste of space. They don't actually care who you are, who your company is. All they really want to know is uh, what's relevant for them what's the value that they're going to get out of reading and maybe responding? And how does it relate to them and their company and their life? So this example here um, of wanting to introduce you to the company name of the startup, uh, Acme. And what Acme does is we tend to, or we intend to revolutionize the software quality assurance model. So that doesn't say anything about the benefit to the prospect. What are they going to get out of it? Great, you're going to revolutionize this. Okay, I'm already skeptical whenever anyone says revolutionize or game change or anything like that, but this is very vague. It doesn't say anything specific. There's no benefit in there for the prospect whatsoever. 
On the other hand, you look at this first sentence that goes with the subject line I just showed you. Um, it says, I was wondering what company X was doing to achieve their sales goals. Uh, this is a little bit vague. It could be a little more specific in terms of maybe different KPIs or give a little more context, but it explains why the person is reaching out to contact the prospect as well as it opens a conversation. And this is not really all a cold email is. It's just a conversation. You're not trying to sell them. You're not trying to get them to like do a bunch of different things. All you're trying to do is get them to respond and start a conversation with you. Nothing more, nothing less. And so assuming that you've got them to keep reading and you've hooked them with something that's interesting and conversational, what's next? Okay, now is where you build your credibility. You're still a stranger and the prospect is probably pretty suspicious of why you're reaching out to them. They're very quickly evaluating in a few seconds if you are worth their time or not. Are you someone credible or are you full of BS? And so that's where the social proof statement comes in. So in this case, the person who sent this cold email said, we have worked on a number of projects and campaigns. All our packages are tailor made and designed according to your requirements. Increase your client base and market your product to millions or let us bring the buying leads for you. First of all, this is awful grammar. It's not very well written, but it's so nonspecific. It's offering and promising a lot without explaining how, and also just giving grand statements without any kind of proof or credibility. And so when you see something like this, any intelligent person would be skeptical of claims like this. It's just, it's not convincing. So what you should do instead is try to build trust and a sense of credibility through actually naming names of some clients um, and giving stats wherever you can. So here's a sentence that goes to the intro and subject line that was just mentioned. It says, we have a theory about leveraging the competitive spirit of games to increase sales productivity. This same concept has helped our SaaS clients increase their revenue by 100% in eight weeks and achieve a 65% increase in outbound emails over three months. And so it actually did say the client's name here, um, which was taken out of the example, but notice how it says SaaS clients. This email was all sent to uh, VP sales operations titles at SaaS companies. So there's evidence of success with people like them. And what's the success? 100% increase in revenue in eight weeks and a 65% increase in outbound emails over three months. So two positive things. It kind of explains how there's a little bit of mystery to keep you intrigued, but it's much more credible. So, okay, let's assume that you've gotten as far as convincing these people to somewhat trust you. They've read the email halfway through or two thirds. What's next? Your call to action. So you can get everything right and then screw up your call to action and your whole email was a waste. A lot of times, um, one of the biggest mistakes that people do is they forget that they need to have an incentive for the prospect to respond in their call to action. Other times they'll also um, have a very weak or confusing call to action or just simply even leave the call to action off. But um, let's look at this example. So it says, if there is any question you want to ask, feel free to message me at any time. This is something I might use for a breakup email. This is definitely not a call to action I would use for a cold email. Um, it's not giving any reason to the prospect to respond at all. It's so passive. And 
It's just not very enticing. So let's look at this one on the other hand. When do you have time for a short call so I can learn a bit more about companies, sales processes, and share my sales productivity idea with you? So this is going back to the same example that I showed before. It's the same email. This is the call to action sentence there. And so notice how there's an incentive here. The incentive is hearing an idea, which we talked about before, is related to increasing one company's revenue by 100% in eight weeks. So the idea is that the prospect thinks, okay, if I take this call, there's a very good chance that whether or not I do business with this person, I'm going to learn something of value that will improve my company's sales productivity or revenue. And as a VP of sales operations at a software company, that is very enticing to me. So that's probably why that this single email got about 12 appointments when it was first sent out, more since then. So let's look again at the entire email that was actually written, uh, just so you can see it in its entirety. So notice how short it is. A lot of emails are way too long. They resemble novels or blog posts and I don't really want to say that there's a certain number of sentences or characters that you can't go beyond whatsoever because it's important that you are clear in explaining what your intentions are and what the value is but generally as a rule of thumb I would not go beyond five sentences in fact, most of my cold emails are actually only three sentences long, although this one is four. So the trick is to focus only on one idea or benefit per cold email. So the main idea or benefit here is sales productivity, increasing sales productivity. So if you notice, everything in this email is related to that or supporting that in one way or another. So the subject line is a little bit vague, but intriguing, but it's related to sales productivity. Um, the first sentence is kind of an intro to a conversation around that. And then in the middle, they explain a little bit more about their approach to sales productivity as well as their results they've had. And then finally, there's a call to action around that. Notice how you're not listing five bullets of different benefits or different product features. It's all one idea. And the best copywriting, whether it's cold emails or, you know, web copy or whatever, is very focused. And when you lose focus, you dilute your message. So for every email you send, just focus on one idea at a time. Um, if you feel like you have a lot of different ideas and value props, that's great. Instead, what you can do is make a list of all of them and separate them into different emails. So I actually recommend sending eight different emails to every prospect because um, actually about 30% of your responses in a campaign will come from emails five through eight. So if you're only sending four emails, you're missing out on about 30% of your leads. So each of those emails can be focused on a single takeaway point, just like this one. And if you do that, um, and try to cover as much ground as you can by listing all your different, not listing, but um, in each email going over a different value prop uh, and a different angle around that value proposition, whether it's more fear of loss or more focused on competition or desire, um, that will attract different kinds of people from your audience. And so if you have eight emails, email three might be very desire focused and that will attract some people, whereas email four might be more fear of loss and that attracts a different kind of person and that's okay. Also notice that there's a lot of personalization in this example. Company name is mentioned three times. And that's important so that the prospects know that this is not a completely mass email, even though it actually is. <laughs> um, 
And you can go a lot further with personalization, uh, even having a custom sentence, but before you go wild with that, it's better to go uh, lighter with personalization like this to see what your baseline is um, so that you know uh, basically the cost of increasing your personalization. So you want to think for spending an extra two hours for a list of 100 people, how much higher response rate am I getting? Because that time could also be spent elsewhere. So if two hours, and I'm making these numbers up, but if for two hours um, you're able to significantly increase your response rate, then you should definitely personalize more, especially if your audience is very competitive um, in terms of other industries are reaching out to them a lot. But if you have a really great product and not a lot of people are hitting your audience and they're very excited about your product, maybe you don't need to do that. So it just kind of depends, and that's why it's good to start with uh, minimal personalization. And the last point I want to note is that this email is also very conversational, and it's written in first and second person. So you want to avoid third person using words like they and uh, our industry, blah, 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 blah. Keep it very conversational so it feels like a one-on-one -on -one request and not marketing. And I hope you found that helpful. So if you want more cold email tips, you can go to our latest guide. Um, actually, there's a special link just for you that I created. It's uh, bit.ly slash salesfolkjuly. And you can see copywriting secrets for crafting seductive cold emails. It's all about how to write cold emails that um, will basically start conversations every time. And all the copywriting best practices around that. Hopefully you found that helpful. Thank you. So now I'm going to hand it over to Chris. He's going to talk a little bit about the tools that you can use to bring your sales efforts to them. Thank you, Heather. I consider myself to be pretty effective at writing cold emails because I spend the time to personalize them. But I have to say, I learned a few additional tips that will help me write even better emails. My number one takeaway is keep it short. I typically want to highlight every single competitive advantage, but Heather is right. It's more effective to just highlight one differentiator per email. So if you follow Heather's advice, in the best case, your prospects will reply to all of your emails as soon as they read them. And in the worst case, they won't reply right away, but I'm going to introduce you to our patented vision solution that will allow you to know when prospects are engaged with your emails. So science is the foundation of how we approach sales acceleration and is the underpinning of everything that we do here at Inside Sales. Furthermore, we make science simple to help you know who to sell to, when to call or email, how to motivate sales reps, and how to hire, all leading to an acceleration in sales for your organization. What makes us different is what we call Neuralytics. It's our approach to bringing deep data science and machine-based learning to our customers. In the cloud, we combine data from all sales interactions generated by our suite of products, specifically from our platform, together with billions of contextual external data points to predict future behavior, to prescribe sales efforts, and to drive real business value. So our sales acceleration platform, just to give you a brief overview, consists of five key categories. The first is prescriptive lead scoring and prioritization. The key product there is Neural View. The second is intelligent communications, Power Dialer. The third is engagement tracking or vision, which is the product we'll talk about today. The next is predictive hiring, which consists of sales indicator and personogenics, a recent acquisition. And then the fifth is data-driven motivation or power standings. So here's a research study that was done internally with several hundred clients of inside sales to determine which mode of communication is preferred most. And as you can see on the x-axis, you've got your email, the office phone, mobile phone, all the way to Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. And what jumped out at me is while you hear a lot about social media in the consumer world, 
in the B2B world, email is still number one in terms of the preferred contact method and the likelihood to respond. And this is why tracking email is so critically important. To further underscore the value of email, a typical deal at Inside Sales looks something like this. A typical sales rep will send around 30 emails for every five phone calls and every one web go to meeting. And then we looked at the common problems that sales reps face. And the way we broke the problem down was into three main categories, contacting the right people at the right time with the right content. In other words, if you talk to the right person and have the right content, but your timing is off, the deal won't work. Likewise, if you have great timing and great content, but you talk to the wrong person, the deal won't go through either. So if one of these components isn't in place, then the prospect won't engage. So how can we tackle these three problems in the context of sales email? Our email tracking solution is called Vision. It's a patented solution that power tracks your sales emails. It's really easy to use. All you have to do is write up an email like you do today, include any email attachments or links in the email, and hit send. So no different than the email you sent today. What we do on the back end is we track every email open, we track every link click through, and we track every attachment download. We give you all these alerts in real time. We also track multiple recipients, so you can put as many people as you want in the to and the CC field, and we will tell you who is interacting with your email by name. And then once we've tagged different folks, we can tell you who is forwarding email to whom within your prospect organization, and we also track website visits. We'll tell you how many minutes each prospect is spending on each page of your website. And what we found is that email alerts equals engagement. The more alerts you get, the more engaged the prospect is. Vision will tell you who is engaged by name in real time when the engagement happens. So when someone's interacting with your email or your website, you will know which email and which website page they're interacting with, and will also tell you whether they're interacting from a desktop or a mobile device. So we've had the ability to track attachments in the product for several years, but we're now adding the ability to create and track your template emails. So essentially, you can import your emails from the Vision database or your templates from Salesforce, and you can share them, organize them, and essentially, this is where your cold emails will reside. We give you content reports that will tell you which of your templates is most effective. So if you write five cold emails using Heather's tips, Vision will tell you which of those emails is most effective. So the next topic is when should I reach out? When should you send that email? And as with most things in life, timing is everything. But as we all know, it's a little easier said than done. So for example, here are five studies by different vendors, all email vendors, and uh, they essentially say, send email very early in the morning. The second says, peak open times are just before and after lunch. The next, email sent from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. generate higher open and click rates than any other time of the day. Open rates are best at the beginning of the week, and then finally, open rates are highest on the weekend. So why all of these different perspectives? It's because each segment that you're going after, whether you're selling to a B2B or a B2C market, uh, who you're emailing, what company they're in, what ge geography they're in, uh, there are so many factors to take into consideration. And it really is overwhelming for a human being to really sit down and figure out for each person when's the ideal time to send an email. And so what most sales reps do is they just send emails when it's convenient for them to send emails. Okay, so what's our solution for this? So we give you three options to send an email. Number one, you can hit the send button like you regularly do today. Number two, you can set up a custom schedule. So tell Vision to send your email at 10 a.m. in the morning. Or number three, you can click on Neural Send. Neural Send is our latest neuralytics feature that essentially leverages machine learning and our neuralytics database 
to figure out when the ideal time is to send that email to maximize the probability that it gets interacted with. And I highly encourage you to uh, do a trial with the product and see how NeuralSend works for you. We've also added another new feature to the product, which enables you to click to call directly from your notifications. So in this case, when you're getting these alerts in your sidebar that Tania Alvarez is fully engaged and you want to launch a call to her, all you do is click on the call button and it will launch our Power Dialer and click to call infrastructure within Salesforce and enable you to complete the call in record time. So we circle back to timing is everything. Here is an immediate response study that was done several years ago with a researcher who was a fellow at MIT at the time with a goal of answering the question, what effect does response time have on contact rates and qualification rates for inbound leads? As you see here in the study, the results were astounding, and we found that when a sales rep responded within five minutes, contact rates increased by a factor of 100, and qualification rates increased by a factor of 21. So rather than interrupting a prospect's life and forcing our sales pitch on them, if we engage with our prospects when they are ready, already top of mind, they are far more likely to engage, all of which is to say timing is critical. Here's another advantage of using Vision. We will keep Salesforce fully up to date with all emails. We log all emails inbound and outbound. We also ought to create contact records if the account exists. And then finally, we built a custom emails tab and an emails object that's designed specifically for email. Now, since we're tracking and logging every single email that your sales reps are sending, Think about the visibility that we give to managers. A manager knows exactly which reps are working effectively and which ones aren't, and a manager can drill down to any deal and really figure out whether the forecast is accurate or not based on whether the rep is getting engagement out of that prospect or not. Here's an example of one of our people performance metrics reports that managers absolutely love. You can drill down for every single sales group, drill down to a specific rep, figure out how many emails they're sending, who they're sending the emails to, what engagement they're getting, and essentially score every one of your reps. So circling back and summarizing, the key benefits of vision are, number one, prioritize your most engaged leads. If you talk to the thousands of reps who use this product, they will tell you that they use it throughout the day to essentially connect with prospects that are, that are engaged then and there. So if you send an email two weeks ago, two months ago, and that prospect is fully engaged right now, it's convenient for them to receive a call, and now is when you ought to be calling them. Number two, negotiate contracts. We have a lot of reps who will use Vision to negotiate contracts. If your contract is being engaged with, terrific. You can rest easy. If your contract is not being engaged with, you need to either follow up with an email or follow up with a phone call. And soon thereafter, you can visibly see your contract being forwarded along. Number three, visibility for managers. I showed you some examples in the last few slides. It's absolutely critical to be able to have uh, a tool like this that gives you visibility into exactly what your sales reps are doing, what content is the most effective, which attachments are receiving the most downloads, et cetera. And then what we've shown with every one of our clients, day in and day out, is that sales and results are directly correlated to emails and dials. And with most of our clients, depending on the size of the client at the time that they implement vision, we've had clients that increase their revenues from anywhere from 8% to 33% within the first 90 days. So we've designed Vision to be super easy to use so that most sales reps don't really require any formal training. It's so intuitive that within a few minutes, they get the hang of it. And what we do is we just simply share best, best practices for how to use the tool most effectively. Uh, number one, we have a lot of reps who source leads from LinkedIn or wherever, and then they use Vision to go ahead and target these leads 
and it ends up being a fantastic method for self-sourcing your own qualified leads. Uh, number two, leveraging templates and personalizing emails, which Heather talked about. Uh, number three, including a few clickable links and attachments. The more attractive sounding the link or the attachment is, the higher the click-through will be. Uh, number four, let vision lists guide your follow-up. Pay close, close attention to when your customers are engaged as opposed to what's convenient for you. Uh, and then number five, use click to call and power dial it to close. There's just no substitute for essentially getting on the phone when your prospect is most engaged. I'm uh, incredibly proud of the success that we've had with our customers. Uh, we have over a 1,000 customers, and if you were to pick up the phone and call any Vision customer on the planet, uh, you'll find that they are absolutely in love with the product. Uh, our retention rate is well over 95%. Many of these clients have been with us for as long as I've known the company for the past eight years, and I'll let you read some of these quotes that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, so we hope that you become one of these customers of ours. So to entice you to become a customer, I am incredibly excited about our new vision solution, which is a major upgrade, which we'll be rolling out into GA over the next couple of weeks. And we are taking advanced signups for that product, However, for those of you who have been on this webinar, what we're going to do in addition to the free 14-day vision trial that we are offering, um, we'd like to offer free implementation. So free implementation for the first 50 customers from this webinar that sign up on the link below. Um, and with that, why don't we turn to uh, Q&A. So if you could post your questions to the forum, Heather and I will take turns at responding to them. And um, we will take the first one now. Okay, great. So um, let's see. Uh, Heather, why don't we have you take this first question, and it's how many cold emails should you send a prospect before you stop trying? So uh, I do send a prospect eight emails. They're all in different emails, not just like, hey, it's going up. But a separate thread actually um, have different value propositions and benefits and uh, just different ideas. And the reason for that is uh, we've seen that if you send eight touch points to a list, about 30% of your total response rate Heather, I think, I think we're losing you. Um, why don't we go to the next question. First of all, Stephen Smith, whoever you are, using the Vision Tool today, it rocks. Uh, thank you for that feedback. Uh, there are multiple questions here on how Vision is different than various different companies like Marketo, TadApp, YesWare, and Signals. So there are about five or six questions that address those different uh, competitors. And so let me just kind of summarize how we are different so it's clear to everybody. The first thing we did is we, we invented this technology, and we have three issued patents on email and website tracking. And we, we got these patents issued in 2001. And, um, and, and in terms of categorization, I'd say the first is customer focus. So we, we focused, and we've taken a different approach than most vendors in that we focused on enterprise B2B companies in which sales reps are typically selling to multiple decision makers, right? So you're sending an email with multiple people in the two CC field. It typically begins, for example, with an email sent to the VP of sales and the VP of sales operations. And then as you progress in that cycle over the next week or two, you're typically adding the general counsel, right, to negotiate contracts. And what you want to know is exactly who's interacting with your content, who's forwarding it around, who's truly engaged so you can very clinically put, put your, your follow-up emails or your uh, calls through to the relevant folks. Okay, so that's one. And the second is, like the marketers of the world really are sending out marketing automation uh, emails and, and drip marketing campaigns. And um, from our perspective, we've really targeted vision on a sales rep, really, really for the last mile, okay? And... And what we do is we're really trying to enable them to not only track 
proposals, price quotes, contracts, but we're also tracking the website behavior. And, and this is really quite different than, than what, you know, like the TAD apps and YesWares are doing because essentially what you will find is when, when a prospect is truly engaged, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go and do a Google search and hit the websites of all the companies that are selling products. And if your reps are using Vision, as soon as any prospect that's been emailed with Vision hits one of your websites, you're going to get that alert in real time. In fact, every rep in your company and even the account owner in Salesforce is going to get alerted in real time. And what we've shown time and time again is the first rep to call that prospect will, will essentially win that deal 80% of the time, right? And they're intelligent about the competition and mm-hmm. present the solution correctly. And, um, and really, so the goal is really to help sales reps accelerate the sales cycle and close more deals. And what we'll typically do is we'll measure the number of deals that your reps are closing before vision, and then we'll measure the, reps, the, the, the number of deals are closing after vision. And what we've typically seen is a 21% increase in the close rate, right? So 10 deals per quarter before, we'd expect 12 deals per quarter thereafter. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, Heather, you were breaking up last time. I think uh, your line went, went bad, but the uh, next question is, what's a good cadence for cold emails? Okay, I think we lost Heather. Um, why don't we go to the next one? Uh, let's see, from Robert Posh. How much does this software cost? So the price of Vision today is 49 per user per month, and um, that price is going to remain the same going forward. Uh, and in addition to this monthly price, we, we have um, you know, an enterprise-grade installation because what we typically do that's different than anybody else is we will give you client-side plugins and we will also um, give you a server-level routing setup, right? And so our goal is to track all emails from, from wherever you send them, whether it's a mobile device or a desktop or your iPad or wherever. And so we do charge a one-time implementation fee, and it's generally 20% of the first year's annual contract value. Um, and then the, um, the training and support is included and no extra charge. And, uh, you know, we do offer volume discounts that begin at 50 seats. And, uh, and finally, if we, um, you know, based on this webinar, for the first 50 users that sign up, implementation is free. Mm-hmm. Okay. Heather, are you back? Hi, I'm back. Um, so I, I have a question that, that I'd like to answer. It's from um, – Julia, and it says, is it okay to open an email with uh, Dear Sir or Madam is better off? I would never write Dear Sir or Madam. I think it doesn't really sound conversational or appropriate for anyone in the U.S. Um, whether you do hey, hello, hi, uh, first name, it's fine, but um, I think the more it sounds like a natural email you would send to someone you just met at a conference, the better. And so you probably wouldn't write to someone that you just met, dear Mr. Montgomery, uh, you would just probably say, hi, Brad, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so it's very important that your cold emails take a tone that is not conditional, sounding like something from a textbook. Okay. Um uh, here's another question from Jeff Dodig. Do you offer a CRM with your offering? So we, we um, this vision product essentially works with your email, uh, whether you're using Gmail or whether you're using Outlook, it just doesn't matter. That's our primary point of integration. So we are totally agnostic as to what your CRM is that you're using. So most of our customers will be using, you know, Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, or other CRMs, and we do have a fantastic integration with Salesforce where we will log all activities, and we do a really nice integration with Microsoft uh, as well that we're uh, in, in the process of developing. And then um, we, we have a lead management uh, platform internally here that, um, that many of our clients use, and, um, and we, can, we can, we'd be happy to you know, give anyone a demo of that if they reach out to us. Uh, there's a question here from Amna Rafi. Does Vision tell you if emails end up in inbox or spam? 
So essentially, um, what we what we've done in order to uh, avoid spam uh, filters historically is um, we have we have dedicated an IP address to each client, and that's really the best way to ensure that you know, especially if you're a large enterprise client, you do not you do not want your emails to end up in spam. And so that's been working for the last you know eight years uh, flawlessly. Um, but once again, if an email does end up in spam or a junk folder, there really is no way uh, to know other than if um, you were to contact the, uh, you know, the prospect company and have the prospect company tell you that the email is in spam. And this is one of the primary reasons why um, you know, competitors uh, lose clients to us. And it's because you know, if you're using a competitor product and you follow up with a phone call, and the recipient said, I never received the email, only to find out that it's in the junk folder or in the spam folder, you know, that's, that's, we, we, love, we love when that happens because it results in lead flow to us. Yeah. Good. So I have, I have a question from Eric Liu that says, Heather, is it better to lead with hypothesis, lead questioning, or broadly asked what the prospect's goals or pain points are. So in the earlier, um, so I send eight emails. And for the first one or two, sometimes it'll be a little bit more broad or big. Uh, but they won't really look. Heather, we, we lost you, you again. Uh -huh. really, Heather, we keep losing you. Okay, sorry. Um, I'll let you just take it then, Chris. Okay. So the next one here is, is Salesforce required to use Vision? No, it's not. You, once again, uh, you can just use Vision with your email client. And um, if you have Salesforce, great. We have, a, we have a fantastic integration. And if not, no worries. Um, can Vision be set up for a single user rather than uh, a multi-person Salesforce? Yeah, we, we can absolutely set up Vision for a single user, but it hasn't really been our focus primarily because, and, and it really is, is um, I mean, we do have clients, we, we, we have a five-person minimum, right? And so it's, two, it's 250 bucks per month minimum. And we absolutely have uh, situations in which small startup companies have the CEO and the VP of sales and maybe one other person that initially starts using the product. And uh, they can totally justify it because one one closed deal by the CEO essentially gives you like a ten to eleven thousand percent ROI on the product. Um, and so yes, we absolutely do. But really, our focus is on um, on uh, on enterprise clients that that are larger than five sales reps. Okay. Uh, Another question here, do you follow up your email with a phone call? Yeah, I mean, essentially, uh, when, you, when you integrate a vision with our platform, it really is the best combination because it gives you, you have to use your judgment, right? So we have an algorithmic score that will essentially measure engagement. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's basically a rough, a rough score that will tell you which prospects have had multiple interactions. And clearly, that, those are clients that you have to uh, call. But if you're, you know, in a late sales cycle or even, you know, uh, dealing with uh, attorneys that are negotiating with your contracts and, and essentially um, it either goes dead or you get an interaction with someone that, that's not been responsive, you absolutely want to click, hit click to call and get them on the, on the phone right then and there when they're engaged. Okay. Okay, I'm still I'm reading through these questions to see if there's any question that we haven't answered. Yeah, I think I think we've gotten most most of the questions. So, um, Heather, if you're back, do you want to you want to wrap up yeah. the real portion? Can yeah, right. absolutely. Can you guys hear me okay right now? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, I apologize. I don't know what's wrong with the signal. Um, so I think in general, my takeaways are. So you're sending eight emails. The trick to cold emailing and sending every one of these emails is to always add value with every email. Interesting information. So if you're saying the same thing over and over and over, 
it's very redundant and obnoxious. But um, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, and uh, you can take one message or idea and turn it a lot of different ways. Uh, if you are a video analytics company, you provide a lot of different advice, best practices, and um, basically really get people thinking about uh, their pain points in different ways just by giving different examples. So in your eight emails, if a pain point was lead generation, um, you could provide desire for that prospect by giving them ideas of how they may increase the lead generation for your product. Or you could also make them think of fear of loss, that they're not getting leads that you could help them get. So what you really want to do when you send this email is alternate the messaging that you send. Um, to see what works best, both for your audience as well as um, to keep the emails being done. So if you want more advice on that, you can definitely look at my email copywriting guide. Um, I believe there's a link uh, in the resources section that Mike put, and I'll also send that to you after. Okay, thanks, Heather. And um, I'll just wrap up by saying there, there are a few additional questions that are just rolling in, uh, and we will have each of these questions answered directly um, after we hang up here by my team. And then uh, feel free to reach out to anyone here at Inside Sales. You know how to reach us. And uh, uh, even better, if you are engaged with us, we'll, we'll see you at our website, and we'll, we'll reach out to you. So, um, really appreciate the time today. It's been fantastic. Thanks for all the positive comments. And um, we look forward to uh, reconnecting shortly over the next, uh, next couple of days. Thank you, everybody.